What's up, people? Let's return back to the year of HF here in the Gorilla Com uh, compound here. So I'm um, playing around with this stuff. I'm studying up for the exam. I haven't picked up this book in like months, so I have to get back into that. Uh, doing all sorts of stuff so I could, you know, hit the road running. Uh, while reading the book over there, I was reading what the privileges for HF are. Uh, so far, I cannot speak or transmit on any of the HF bands. But there's one band that I could play with as a technician. And if you guys got your amateur radio license, you could do the same thing. What you do have privileges on is on the 40 meter band down in the uh, CW sort of section of that band, which is 7 megahertz, 0.025 to 7 megahertz 1.25 kilohertz so between those two frequencies you could transmit CW Morse code just a dozen dits dozen dits that's all you have privileges to do if you know CW I don't but that's another story so while I wait around to study up for the test and you know have privileges and all that good stuff uh, I could play around with propagation and building antennas, transmitting and all that good stuff as a technician. So that was cool. So I started looking around the internet, some YouTube videos of course. And uh, there are some people out there that do QRP uh, transmitting on HF. QRP is ham speak for low power transmission. So if you transmit less than 10 watts, a lot of them say less than 5 watts out to the world, that is low power transmission. As a prepper and preparedness and all that good stuff, emergency worker and all that good stuff, uh, I want to see what the, what this HF stuff could do out in the back country out there. In the hills and valleys and mountains and all that stuff. Places where it's really hard to get out as far as your transmission back to your desired location so all in all I needed a little radio that I could man pack out to the field and do what I want to do so on eBay there's this thing here called the Rock Mike 51 this little thing is a radio a CW radio it's only got one frequency and it's hard coded uh, by crystal to one frequency which is 7 megahertz 0 0.023 khertz 7.023 in the 40 meter band uh, I cannot legally transmit with this thing here because it goes out of my privileges of a technician so what I read on the internet and stuff they say that I could recrystallize the radio here for the frequencies that I want between 7.025 and 7.125 kHz megahertz rather so again I went on eBay and brought a set of crystals this is all one frequency right here all these crystals are the same same ones and these crystals are from a kit from uh, this company called QRP me which make little kits like these and stuff I can use all these crystals here, but I cannot use this one. This one here is uh, one seven point zero one five. This guy here is seven point zero three zero. So that's like on the very edge of almost to the very edge of what I could use. And then it, you know, various other crystals. So I could pl possibly plug in one of these crystals in place of these here and change the transmitting frequency of this device here and that will make me 100 percent legal so with this software that I got off the internet which is not recommended really because it's all in Chinese and I need some sort of a cheat sheet here I screen captured this thing that was uh, almost the same thing but in English I can't get the translation onto the actual program on my PC but uh, I could use this to preload uh, whatever text that I want to put on the memory of this guy here. So in the beginning of the video, that's exactly what I did. Uh, 
when, when I press this particular button here and it automatically sent whatever was in its memory so when I actually do the whatever propagation test I want to do later on uh, I'll have my actual call sign preloaded with uh, preloaded meshes saying uh, practicing Nivis uh, call sign so so and so and so so basically I'm cheating because I don't I didn't learn Morse code or anything I'm using technology to my advantage to get on the air that's what I want to do I want to get on the air uh, I can learn this crap later when when I have time but for now uh, during the hot season I want to get out to the hills and start testing the actual propagation properties of HF to see if I could uh, send messages home uh, while negotiating obstacles like uh, mountains and valleys and you know non line of sight stuff bouncing signals up from the ionosphere down to earth to uh, my home base my command center over there no it's not a ham shack that's my command center like always documentation on this device is really crappy and there is a uh, PDF file associated with this but it's written in that is not really comprehensible so this will take uh, from 6 volts to 12 to 13 volts uh, DC so what I have here is uh, this experimental battery pack that is 12 volts USB and this jack right here provides uh, 12 volts going directly into the device here so I've been averaging around 6 to 7 watts coming out of this device here there are smaller radios that that will transmit 3, 2 to 3 watts so but from this guy here if it if it's at 6 watt at 6 volts uh, you should get like uh, 2 to 3, 4 watts but at full 12 volts this one actually will not go above 11.5 so I'm averaging 6 to 7 watts so that's that so here I have my pre and I am legal because I am transmitting into a dummy load right here this is my antenna which is really not it just replicates an antenna so the radio is happy uh, as far as what it expects on the antenna port and it's not transmitting out to the real world so technically I'm not transmitting and it's perfectly legal for testing purposes so like I said the switch right here will activate the, the whatever it's in the memory which is the rush uh, tune YYZ So these two here will increase the pitch higher or lower. Now here I'm using the uh, SDR Play software defined receiver along with this uh, freeware program on, on the internet that you could get for it. And we'll cover that in another video sometime later. And I'm tuned to uh, CW here, 7.025. So here let's transmit that sequence again. Transmit whatever's in memory, this switch right here. You can hear it. Now you can press any of those buttons and it'll stop the transmission. So I think this button here is going lower. No, yeah, going slower in speed. So I give it a couple of presses. Transmit again. So it's slower. I'm going to stop it. Now I'm going to press this button right here, SW5, a few times to make it faster. Transmit the code. I'm going to stop it. I'm going to make it a little bit more faster. Here we go.
So again, this is manufactured in China and you do get what you pay for. I think I paid something like $26 for this whole thing uh, assembled because they come in kits too where everything is apart. I don't have the patience to be assembling crap anymore. So I brought it all assembled and it comes with this case here. And the, the, this, this unit complete or just the radio itself weighs 8 ounces, half a pound. With the battery pack, it's a 1.8 ounce or 1 pound 8 ounce comm set for me to take out to the field. Not including the antenna, which I would imagine add another 8 ounce. Uh, so we're talking about maybe 2, two pounds, 2 and a quarter pounds for everything. Which for humping out in the hills and stuff in the backcountry is perfect. So right in this spot right here. There used to be another phone jack, right? this this uh, component right here, carbon copy on this side here, and what was what that was supposed to be is a jack where you could jack in a uh, key, you know, the, those old style paddles or, or straight key that you see in uh, westerns when they send out telegraphy, uh, when they send out Morse code and stuff. It had the same thing where you could jack in whatever you what, whatever you have. I thought I would be slick by just installing a switch, a monetary switch on the on the case and just uh, shorten it in there or, or install it in, in there in place of that. So in the process of doing that, I must have uh, shorted something in there and it damaged the unit because beforehand I was able to make this thing key out consistently like so if I keyed out, it will key out. Uh, for that amount of time so I could key out with that one tone uh, consecutively or continuously rather now if I apply that short if you hear it it just gives me that one beep no even though I'm still pressing on it so I, I think I damaged something in the circuitry here and the input these connections here are going straight into the chip and so I, I imagine that I damaged something in the chip here there is no buffering between what you do in the outside world and the chip itself so if you fart around around here do something uh, or if you make a mistake you could damage your unit here with in this case I have but uh, I could still have access to the memory of it using the software to input whatever code I want to put in there so this device is not lost I mean 26 28 30 bucks uh, what do you expect so again uh, be careful on that part there this thing is not working out for me like it did before but I can still sort of push to talk by just that one press so what I could do is when I'm out in the field and I'm doing a test in my home unit in my home base here, my command center, I would have the receiver receiving with a voice recorder, a voice actuated voice recorder. So at a predetermined time or I'll take notes out in the field saying I'm going to transmit at this time my call sign that I'm testing Nivis, uh, the Nivis system for intermediate range uh, communications with obstacles in between. Call sign will go out that pertinent information will go out and then I'll maybe manually go five uh, blast one two three four five and then stop and that would tell me when I uh, get the recordings that yeah that was me that was out there or if I don't hear that then I know I wasn't you know around or it didn't make it back home so pretty much that was a brief introduction of what I got so far and what my plan is to get on the air quick without having a general's license so that's one requirement out the door uh, something lightweight and cheap so I could beat it to death without feeling the pain of wasting that money uh, so I got that requirement down 30 bucks I'm not gonna sneeze over that I won't have any uh, fear of beating the crap out of this and doing things I'm not supposed to so that's taken care of. Uh, now what I want to do is 
actually change the crystal out to see if it'll change the frequency 